I'm going to start by creating a new Rails app using my kickoff tailwind template here. Uh, this one's free to use. Just go to just the lever slash kickoff tailwind. It includes device, friendly ID, sidekick, name of person, stripe, and CSS bundling, which is pretty much default with Rails now. I include these because I use them pretty much in every app. And there are other templates out there that just want to give you everything under the sun. I find that sometimes works, sometimes works, but other times it's just too much junk to have to deal with right off the bat. So I prefer to add things rather than have to subtract them. With that in mind, let's create a new template. I'll pass basic reference to this app. I have it locally. So there is a kickoff tailwind folder right inside this folder. Um, this is the latest version of it that I've recently updated just for a few uh, optimizations, remove some old stuff and, you know, added a few new things. Nothing fancy though. In this guide, I'm going to call it Rails New Book Me Demo. The one I showed you in the introduction was just called Book Me for a shorter one, but I already have the app in this folder and I'm just going to keep it there for now. So we'll pass in the template of kickoff tailwind slash template dot rb and I want to pass slash j for javascript and say we want to use es build instead of the default import maps I'm not a huge fan of import maps so I just honestly go straight to es build every time and then uh, for the database we'll use postgresql I just prefer it let's see if this works here we go so it should go fetch all the main core dependencies of Rails and then go through my template and do all the stuff I have there. If you're curious what's happening, if you go into this template.rb file, uh, you'll see just kind of some commands and stuff that I do. Just to install a few things, set other files up and move some files over that I've already had in the template itself. And once it's finally done, it'll kind of spit out some directions. With that done. Uh, quite a bit happened. Don't fear if that looks co complex and scary. It's just some stuff that's being automated to save us some time. Uh, you don't have to know what's going on particularly, but it does help if you were to like go to dissect it and understand it. Uh, you'll find your way around a little bit easier, I should say. So we'll see the end of that app. Um, it's already We've already run bundles, so basically everything's ready to really roll. With the new version of Rails 7, you can just run bin dev, uh, or if you don't want to do all the the Tailwind stuff, you could still run Rails server, but this runs both the JavaScript, the Rails server, and Tailwind in unison. So we'll run that. This will kick things off. We'll see our template at localhost 3000. This is my little landing page I made for it. For this particular app, we won't have like a public facing index page. Obviously you could, you should add that if we were to take this and run with it for like marketing purposes. But in this case, uh, everything's going to be like a direct URL based thing or just um, an authenticated user who's going to be creating like booking types as discussed in the intro. So the first thing I want to do is kind of get that mantra going and go into our routing. And with device, you can have two different route paths. And it's kind of neat because you can go and configure one to be for the logged out user and one to be for the logged in user. And in our case, we're going to want one for each. So I'm going to delete these comments right now. And this is what comes in my template. Um, if it's confusing, this is just basically saying if a user is an admin, they can go view the sidekick UI. Acquire that with this here. Since we installed the sidekick gem, it kind of comes bundled. And then we're setting up device to be just the basic routing for that. And then also routing to a index uh, home folder, which is part of the template as well. That doesn't come with Rails by default, typically. So what I want to do here is uh, extend the authenticated route to be something different. So in our case, I want to say root to home dashboard. And so it'll be an action called dashboard instead of index. And then we'll just say as authenticated, authenticated root. It's just a little bit different, but it's a device gives you that built in uh, way to deviate between those. So now a logged out user will still see what we see on the right, but someone who's logged in will see the dashboard view, which we'll create in the home folder. 
and we'll go up to the controller and make an action for dashboard too. So def dashboard. And to be featured complete here, we'll say authenticate user only dashboard. If you want to, you know, get technical there. I think that should be fine without really, because it's already kind of doing that with our routing, but it's kind of a nice uh, insurance policy there. All right, so I'll, I'll say go to sign in. We don't have an account yet, so I'll create one. And yeah, we might not actually need that actually. I'll just delete that. So now when you're logged in and you see what will be the dashboard page to confirm that if you want to do like an H1 tag and say dashboard, that should show up there. Cool. So that's kind of part of the initial setup. Like this is going to be what you would maybe sign in and view after you know creating an account to you know use this booking app. One thing I want to do is go into our user model. Well, actually, let's start by creating our, our first models. We do have our user model already. We don't really need to worry about much else. Um, but I will include coming back here. I will be coming back here to to change a couple things based on how we are doing our logic. So. Let's get to the nitty gritty and do some scaffolding. So I'll say rails generate scaffold booking. Uh, that's what's going to be the main thing that a public facing user can do. They can book a booking with uh, someone they want to meet with kind of like Calendly if you're familiar. So we are going to have a status column and this is going to kind of deviate or dictate, um, you know, validated payment options if there are one. So if someone were to pay to book a time, we can put it in a certain state. So if it is um, in a certain state, then we can like, you know, make sure the payment went through and so on and so forth. So I'll get to all that coming up right now. We're at the fundamentals of the project though. So we'll have a first name string and last name string. Now we're going to collect personal info from this because we we want to be able to do this from a logged out stance so like if someone's logged out I want them to still be able to create a booking with whoever they're wanting to book with and same with payment stuff too so all that should be public facing you shouldn't have to log in just more or less to improve the usability having to log in every time you you do something like that's annoying to me so even though it's probably more easy on the back end to to worry about so here's all the the fields i have at the moment uh so we have a status that's going to be an integer and we're going to use a something called the enum for that and that's just kind of a handy way to set statuses in rails and ruby i guess you could say we're going to use the name of person gem to f feed into these fields so first name and last name will be strings. I'll get to that in a moment. Uh, we're going to collect email. So we have a, like a way to identify the booking, the person booking, uh, and then the start at and end at, which is kind of just the way of knowing when their meeting time will be. And you could get fancy with this and add like a schedule. So if you wanted to do a certain booking type that has a different schedule, if it's only like 30 minute meetings or something like that, you could go that route. I think that's what Calendly does. So while it's simple, it looks pretty complex under the hood. So let's go ahead and run this. And this will create a ton of files, many of which we don't need. But to me, this is fast and quick and easy. So I want to just kind of go through that. We'll go into our view or our schema, actually. I should say our migrate folder. And in this particular one, we want to actually set some defaults. So I uh, actually forgot one attribute here that I'll add on my own. So I'll say Boolean customer paid. This is one's important, so don't skip that one. Zero. And since it's an integer, or since it's a Boolean, zero in this case means false. So you can also just say false. For status, we're going to set a default of zero here because we're going to have three different statuses. So you can't just say like true or false and it needs to be an integer anyway, since we're saving it as that type in the database. And the enum side of this will help that make more 
since if you've never used enums before, I have another guide on that. Maybe I'll link to it. Um, but it's worth checking out as it's improved a lot of like status or different style of things that often change on a record, like hands down makes it way easier. So consider that. Okay. So with that, we can go ahead and migrate our database. Cool, so that creates our booking. Our schema should be updated at this point. If you go to the schema, it should have all the stuff we installed previously and now a bookings table. Uh, so those things are added by default. We get our defaults as well since we added that. Okay, now the next one I wanna add is called a booking type. And I made this the same name as booking type because I don't have a great name for it and they relate quite heavily. So I don't, I don't think it's a big deal as long as you understand it on the back end. Naming is always quite hard, so it's something to consider. So we'll do another scaffold. We'll call this booking type. This one's going to have a name. That's a string. Uh, pro tip, if you do, if you want it to just be string by default, you don't need to pass the colon string. Just one of those things you could do. Uh, location, same thing. Uh, description, this one will be rich text. We'll use action text for that. Just because uh, I'm going to set a custom color so you can deviate between those and then a duration of the meeting. So this will be an integer and then payment required. So if you think of Calendly in this case, it's more or less like you're setting up your different meeting slots. So maybe you have a 15 minute, a 30 minute and one hour. That's kind of how I modeled this app. So that's kind of something you could consider when thinking about this. Yeah, we'll set a payment required, basically if you want to uh, require payments to book the meeting, and then a price would be integer. And we'll reference the user since it's already created in the database. And that's a shorthand, just essentially adds a user ID, if you spell it right, references. There we go. So we'll see that in the database here and we're gonna set some defaults on this one as well. So let's go back to the DB migrate folder, the latest one. The default color, I'll just make a string of black, which if you know any CSS, that's six zeros with the hash sign in between or in the beginning. Default of false on this one. And that's about it. So we'll keep those and then migrate that one. Okay, just checking out our schema again. I, I prefer to look at the schema and just think of the database itself. So it's kind of just my way of knowing its status at any given moment. This file changes on its own, so you would never really edit it, but it's something that's good to refer back to. There we go. So now we have a user ID on the booking type because every user can make their own specific booking types. So this would be something you would want to have an account to do. Um, and we'll do that coming up. All right, a few migrations and then we'll do the, the relationship logic and model. So I'll say Rails generate migration and say we're gonna add references to bookings. Since we created bookings before booking type, this is something you, you could have added, but it was kind of confusing. So I did it separately just to make it a little more clear. We're gonna add a booking type ID to the booking. Let me just show you by example. Bookings, booking type ID, and that's gonna be an integer. I'll go ahead and run that, and I'll show you what ends up being, need to really change anything with this. This is just gonna add this ID column to our bookings. So each booking has a perf you know an actual booking type associated with it. So Rails DB migrate again if you want. I'm gonna add one more migration after this. So now if you go, in the schema into the booking itself, we'll see an integer of that ID. And that's just going to be how we relate any new booking to a specific booking type, which ultimately relates back to the user who created it. So it's kind of a nice chain of effects there. And then one last one, we're going to extend the user model in this case. So we'll say rails generate migration, add booking link to users. So typically, if you name this a certain way, you're adding something to the table name, it can actually kind of 
propagate the file for you, assuming it, you name things a certain way. I think this is more or less just um, you understand it as you go thing with Rails, more of a convention, or it's very much convention. Uh, so if you can follow that, you can get a file to pretty much write itself in this case. In this particular column, I'm going to call it booking link, and that's going to end up being the URL of the user. So if, if, you, saw, if you saw in the introduction, we had like Jace Myth as an actual route, and that doesn't exist in this app yet, but it will. And that gives us a way to, you know, give a private or a public link to a user and make it unique as well. So I attach this dot, uh, colon unique shorthand on the end of this. So there can only be one specific um, booking link per account, if that makes sense. So we'll run that. And this ensures that on the database level, we can even ensure it at the model level too, if you want to be real extra hard about that validation. Uh, when you add a unique constraint like that, it makes an index on it. Rails DB migrate. That'll be all ready to roll. That gets us set up under the hood. Nothing really changed otherwise. Um, like that new column exists on the user, but we don't have it in the view yet. But uh, that's, that's kind of where we're going to head next. But I want to go and get into the model relationships. We already have user references that was on the booking type. So I'll update this. It will say it has many bookings. And then on the booking, we're going to have kind of the inverse effect. So it'll be first, I'm going to do the has person name here. And this is a gem, if you don't recall, or you're not sure. It's a gem I added with the template made by DHH, the guy who made Rails. It's a nice little built-in gem that gives you a shorthand ways of rendering people's names. Let's see. Yeah, by Basecamp, I should say. Uh, so you could just call all these different attributes on that name. And it requires a first name and last name column in the database, but then it's just a bunch of Ruby to make those things work. So I, I keep that in the template pretty much nonstop. It's very useful. And then, so we'll say belongs to booking type. Okay. And then finally, I added this uh, has rich text notes and the after fact you don't need to have this like on the column of the booking table this is just part of the action text and active storage capabilities so that's a nice little feature you don't have to like plan ahead for so by that i mean on the bookings table there's no notes field or anything to worry about it just goes and heads and adds it to the model there okay so then on the user We'll finally have, put that down here, has many booking types. So the chain of events is there's the user model would go create a booking type. And then of that booking type, another user could create new book booking. So booking one, booking two, booking three, those all relate back to that specific type and ultimately relate back to the user, if that makes any bit of sense. That's what we just set up with those uh, scaffolds and then these relationships. So typically when you have a has many on a model like this, the inverse of that's gonna mean uh, belongs to user or belongs to uh, that same uh, independent model so you got those like relationships back and forth. It's kind of some Rails 101 there. All right, so the next part, I think I'm going to uh, update our user model to uh, accept these new attributes that we added, so booking link. So I'll get to that in the very next video.